talk about the whole new world that is Aladdin on Broadway. The Disney musical is as shining, shimmering and splendid as I hoped it would be on stage. Adam Jacobs in the title role and Courtney Reed as Jasmine sing all your favourite songs from the 1992 movie and Jeannie James Monroe Iglehart's big number, A Friend Like Me, is genius. With a menacing Jonathan Freeman as Jafar, a flying carpet that defies all logic and the beautiful setting that is the New Amsterdam Theatre, seeing this show is a theatrical experience that will bring out the kid in you however old you are. My pick of the month is a crazy, off-the-wall, super dark musical called The Visit. The show is an adaptation of an old German play about a famous billionaire who returns to her poor childhood town under all kinds of creepy and mysterious circumstances. Under the direction of John Doyle, the show is a stunner, and Claire is magnetic, a vision in white with a kooky entourage and a real vendetta. John Kander and Fred Ebb, who wrote all sorts of classics like Chicago and Cabaret, finished this musical shortly before Ebb died in 2004, so the fact that it's finally arrived on Broadway is cause for celebration. But the real event here is Cheetah Rivera, the two-time Tony-winning star who has taken on the leading role at the age of 82. Rivera is more electrifying than ever. Be sure to go and cheer on this legend for yourself. There are a ton of new shows opening on the main stem this month, but I'm so glad that I headed uptown to catch Lincoln Center's The Mystery of Love and Sex off-Broadway. There's nothing like sinking your teeth into a juicy new play, and this comedy-drama hybrid by Bathsheba Duran has it all. It's hilarious, it's heartfelt, it's thrilling, it's got an amazing cast including Diane Lane and Tony Shalhoub, and it's stuck with me for weeks. This story about a daughter and her parents coming to terms with love has tons of plot twists, but it doesn't feel like a soap opera. Instead, it explores every facet of love from the inside out in a really refreshing way. I've got nothing but love for this surprising new play. I love Elizabeth Moss on Mad Men. Her character Peggy Olsen grows from being unsure of herself to a powerhouse player. I guess Moss likes playing badass characters like that, because Heidi Holland in the Heidi Chronicles has similarities. This is a coming of age story for baby boomers, but I'm not a baby boomer and I completely connected with it. I've adored Wendy Wasserstein since I was a teenager falling in love with theater. Not only was she a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright and the first woman to win a Tony for Best Play, but she was smart, funny, self-deprecating, and always seemed to be not quite together, which made her totally relatable. And that's how I feel about the Heidi Chronicles. It had the same satisfying effect as a long talk with an old friend. Go see it. I read Alison Bechdel's graphic memoir, Fun Home, the summer after graduating college. And I was blown away by this story of this captivating girl and her family. So when I went to see Lisa Crone and Janine Tesori's musical adaptation, I was nervous but hopeful. Here's the truth. Fun Home is the most gorgeous, daring, and rewarding musical I've ever seen. From the opening notes of It All Comes Back, you'll know you're in the presence of greatness, and that feeling won't dispel. The whole cast, including Broadway greats Judy Kuhn and Michael Cerveris, is stunning. But Sydney Lucas as Small Allison is a revelation. She's a young Sutton Foster in the making. Fun Home is so much more than a musical about a lesbian. It's unlike anything you've seen before, and you'll never forget it.